Traditionally, Easter eggs are supposed to be well hidden because the Easter Bunny gets a perverse thrill out of watching people search for things in vain. What? He does. Video game Easter eggs follow this tradition as well, but sometimes developers are too good at hiding Easter eggs and secrets in their games to the point where it can take months, years, or even decades for them to be discovered by enterprising fans. Here then are seven video game Easter eggs and secrets that took fans forever to find. Enjoy and do beware spoilers ahead for the following games. While the point of the Street Fighter games is for all the characters to beat each other unconscious, most of those characters seem like nice folks who you'd be happy to go for a drink with. <sighs> Some can hold it better than others. One terrifying character you'd probably want to avoid at closing time, however, is Akuma, the violent and aggressive practitioner of the Dark Haddo and master of the Raging Demon. Akuma, wins. Akuma was a playable fighter in the arcade version of Street Fighter Alpha 2, along with a stronger, even meaner version of himself called Shinakuma. Shinakuma was a hidden boss and, when unlocked with a special combination of button presses, playable as well. <laughs> In the home version of Street Fighter Alpha 2 for the SNES, however, it seemed that Shinakuma only existed as his hidden boss form, there to hand your ass to you in the most humiliating manner possible. Or at least that's what we thought at the time. In fact, Shinakuma was secretly playable in the SNES version, but the method to unlock him was so arcane and complicated that it remained a secret for 25 years, and was only discovered by a modder reverse engineering the game so as to optimise it for modern gamers. To uncover this quarter century old secret, players had to first get the number one spot on the game's high score table and enter the initials KAJ. Then, back on the title screen, they'd have to hold down the L, X, Y and start buttons on a second controller while the first controller selected the mode. Then, in character select, they'd have to choose Akuma while holding the start button. If Akuma's gi turned purple, that meant it worked. And voila! You could play as Shin Akuma, a character so OP he's guaranteed to be banned from your two-player throwdown mere minutes after you and your friends unlock him. But still. Stand back, fool, I've got a bomb. Huh? All right. <laughs> Batman Arkham Asylum is set in the mental health care facility of the same name, a state-of-the-art hospital overseen by a warden whose name I forget. I'm Warden Idiot. You'll never escape. Warden Idiot. That's it. Oh no, wait, it says here that actually the warden of Arkham Asylum is a man called Quincy Sharp, whose office you can find in the Arkham Mansion the Asylum is built around. Sharp's office isn't just a place of work, however. It also contains a secret room hidden behind a nondescript wall that went undiscovered for months after the game first came out. The room in question isn't on any maps, doesn't appear when Batman scans the walls with his detective vision, and the Dark Knight needs several doses of explosive gel to break into it, which explains why no one actually found this easter egg on their own. After six months, Rocksteady had to sheepishly tell people where to go to find the secret room, which it turned out contained the secret announcement of the next Batman game. The room itself contained some horrible statues and some office equipment, but most importantly, the blueprints for Sharp's next big plan and Studio Rocksteady's next big game, Arkham City. Of course, by the time people found it, the game had already been announced thanks to Warden Sharp hiding his secret room so well. Guess Warden Idiot is smarter than he looks. Yeah! I'll move. Okay, buddy, you got turbo power. 
jet skiing is probably the only activity where the limitless strength of the ocean slams a hunk of fiberglass into your groin and you'd still call it a good time. And no game in history has captured that fun time as capably as 2001's Wave Race Blue Storm on the GameCube, made famous by its sunny vibes, skiddy jet ski controls and most memorably for us at least, this incredibly laid back supportive announcer who commented on everything you did with the energy of Keanu Reeves giving the Oscar speech he's been so cruelly denied all these years. Yeah! That's right! Make sure you go around the bridge the right way! Uh -huh. Okay, okay buddy, you've got turbo power. Each playable character had their own specific announcer, but what players at the time didn't know was that there was another secret announcer that could be unlocked in Wave Race Blue Storm, through a method so obscure that it took a full nine years for it to be discovered by a user named Raoul Duke on the NeoGAF message board. By going to the audio settings menu, tweaking a waveform there and then entering a version of the famous Konami code, players could unlock this new announcer, although why they'd want to is another question, because this new announcer is sarcastic and mean. Yeah, it's me. The only reason I'm here is because no one else will have you. But I gotta tell you, I'm not looking forward to whatever miserable display you have in store for me. And spends the whole time trying to crush your spirit, which is the opposite of the jet ski ethos. You only have two faults. Everything you do and everything you say. All that should be being crushed is my groin. Thank you very much. The 1994's Super Punch-Out for the SNES introduced a lot of improvements over the original Punch-Out game, including better graphics, new gameplay mechanics and new characters, some of whom you have to wonder where they got their boxing license from. <laughs> What it still lacked, however, was a two-player mode, meaning that any friends who came round for an afternoon of Punch-Out had to take turns knocking out Super Macho Man instead of being able to play together. Or at least it did for the first 28 years it was out. In 2022, however, Twitter user Unlisted Cheats discovered two new cheat codes for the game. These were confirmed to work not only on the original cartridge, but also the SNES app on Nintendo Switch Online and the SNES Classic Edition mini console. When used together, these cheats added the Fable two-player mode. The reason it took so long to discover these codes is because there's very little chance you'd do it by accident. To activate them, you needed to hold Y and R on a second controller on the title screen, then press A or Start on the first controller, and you would unlock a screen where, for the first time, you could select your opponent from all of the game's 16 fighters. Then from this new menu at the character info screen, you'd need to hold B and Y on the second controller and press A or start on the first controller. At this point, the selected opponent could be controlled with the second controller. Imagine that. Finally adding two-player mode and making Super Punch-Out, the definitive multiplayer boxing game, a mere 28 years after its release. I mean, as long as no other boxing games have been released in that last 28 years. Pretty sure we'd have noticed. Ask most people what the best cheat is in N64 James Bond em up Goldeneye, and they will, of course, say DK mode, which gives everyone a massive melon. There are, in fact, 23 cheats for Goldeneye, ranging from Tiny Bond to Paintball mode to ones that give you specific weapons. But if you're paying close attention, you'll notice that the two sides of the cheat column don't quite add up. In fact, one cheat seems to be missing. Well, that's because there was originally a 24th cheat that was removed by developer Rare prior to release. This code was only discovered by players much later on using code-altering software like a Game Shark. That final cheat was Line Mode. While all other cheats in GoldenEye could be unlocked by completing time trials on the game's various levels, Line Mode was removed from that list and could only be unlocked in the game through an incredibly complicated, almost impossible to stumble across by accident, series of button presses. But it was worth it for anyone who wanted to make their GoldenEye game look like it's an extremely lo-fi animation done with paper and a marker pen. One warning though, you will get Take On Me by Aha stuck in your head if you aren't careful. But don't worry, it should clear up 
in a day or two. Leon! It's good to see you're still among the living. It looks like we're not going to find your brother here after all. There's no reason for us to stay any longer than necessary. Let's split up, look for any survivors, and get out of here. The Stars team from the Resident Evil series may have an incoherent uniform policy. Nobody was in it. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. And they might totally panic in the face of a hostile enemy encounter. But they are in fact a highly trained police unit operating out of the Raccoon City Police Department. Fans of the series were able to check this for themselves in sequel Resident Evil 2, which takes place in the RCPD building and features an office for the STARS team, where you can check out the team members' desks and find out that, for example, Jill has a picture of a boyfriend on her desk, while Chris's is a total pigsty. Search secretly evil STARS team leader Albert Wesker's desk, however, and you receive the message that it's trashed and that someone must have searched it already. Fair enough, you'd think. Why would Resident Evil 2 lie to me? Guess I'll be off about my business. And then, you'd give it no further thought. Well, bad luck, you fool, because actually, Resident Evil 2 is hiding a secret in Wesker's desk, and you just gave up the search too early, like an absolute casual. What you actually should have done is search Wesker's desk over and over again, receiving the same message every single time. Until finally, on the 50th search, you find a film canister, which you can take to the police station's darkroom to develop into a picture of STARS recruit Rebecca Chambers in her gym kit. Why is this here? We don't know, but it's apparently canon enough that you can find the exact same thing in the recent Resident Evil 2 remake, only now Rebecca is in a slightly more suggestive pose. I mean, on the list of Wesker red flags, this is pretty low down the list, but still. Ew. Continuing with Resident Evil, we all know that Resident Evil 4 is full of creepy people. It's kind of the point. She will join us. Become one of us. This is no ritual. It's terrorism. But one of the creepiest people in Resident Evil 4 doesn't even turn into a hideous eyeball monster. Instead, they watch you from the shadows, far away, and have managed to remain hidden for 12 long years. Discovered independently by both YouTubers SR212787 and Slippy Slides, this figure can be spotted near the end of the game, right after luckless helicopter pilot Mike crashes. Mike! Using a scope to peek through this gap in the wall, they are just about visible. But as Slippy Slides shows here in their video, if you use a hack to untether the camera, you can float over there and get a proper look at this green jacketed creeper hanging out outside the level. The 2D texture of this figure is available in the game's texture files, giving us a slightly better look at the person. But we're still none the wiser as to who this is, how they got into the game, or what they're doing all the way over there outside of the level. All I know is, if he starts growing eyeballs in places where there aren't supposed to be eyeballs, it's time to run. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video about secrets that it took fans ages to find. Now, I've hidden a couple of secret videos on this page. Let's see if you can find them. They're pretty well hidden, so you'd have to be pretty cool and clever to find where they are. Could be, could be anywhere. Over here, or even over here, they could be. So, see if you can find them. If you can, 100 points to you.